Hey everybody, welcome to West Seattle Christian Church Online. If you're new, welcome. If not, welcome back. Today we're going to finish up our The Way of Jesus series by talking about the actionable practice of worship and worshiping God every day like Jesus. What do I mean by the actionable practice of worshiping God every day? Well, exactly that. As opposed to only worshiping God once a week uh, at a prescribed time. Jesus talks about this himself in John 4, which we'll get to in a minute. But what has kind of become default mode for many Christians today is to only regard worship as the thing you do on Sunday at church. And there, even then, we often only think it refers to singing. But that's not what worship services were ever intended to be. Like they alone are the end all be all of what encapsulates or constitutes worshiping God. Worship through song with the larger church is only a fraction of living a life of worship. How we shape our ordinary days by bowing down at the feet of God and giving our daily moments over to him has a direct correlation with the practice of worshiping corporately on Sunday. In other words, the actionable practice of worship means integrating your ordinary day-to-day -day life the other six days of the week with how you worship corporately when the church gathers together. Both types uh, are, mom are moments that are meant and designed to give glory and honor to God and are also meant to shape and form you into an imitation of Jesus's life. When we look at Jesus's life, he seems to be in worshipful, if that's a word, communion with God the Father at all times. There is no well, go to church on Sunday and worship only in this spot in this way and only if they're playing my favorite style of music. True worship does not equal going to church on Sunday. And this is why I brought up John 4 specifically earlier, where Jesus says to the Samaritan woman at the well, in no uncertain terms, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in the truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. So Jesus had a fully present and fully integrated daily life that acknowledged God equally in the mundane activities as well as in the highlight activities of corporate worship with others. He's the one who makes this kind of worship possible, in fact. He says, we can worship anytime and anywhere in spirit and in truth. And our worship in everyday life can be the same. Much like Paul says he can pray without ceasing and we should pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, we're basically talking about the idea of punctuating every moment of our lives with inward songs and prayers and praise and thanksgiving. When we live a life of worship daily, then when we gather for public worship together at church, then our expectancy for that is heightened and becomes a continuation and intensification of what we've been already doing day by day during the week. I love what Tish Harrison Warren, author of a book called Liturgy of the Ordinary, says about how our daily lives are the crucible of our formation. She says, and this is kind of a long quote, but it's an important one. She says, our daily lives are the very place of, pra of practices that shape who we are and what we worship. It's in these small moments of our everyday life. Most of our life is spent sleeping or sitting in traffic or going to work or sitting around a dinner table. So if we exclude God from these ordinary things, we actually end up missing God in the very places of daily formation. The way we spend our days is the way we spend our lives. We have to learn where Jesus meets us in these ordinary moments. We have to explore what it means to seek God in our daily lives and to be sought by God in our daily life. This is a life of worship. I love that. The heart of worship is to seek to know God and to love God in our own unique way on a daily basis, to respond to how God loved us first in our lives. I was introduced to uh, Brother Lawrence about 10 years ago by a longtime mentor of mine. He gave me a book called Practicing the Presence of God. Brother Lawrence was a layman in the Brotherhood of Carmelite Priests in Paris 
after he served in the Thirty Years' War. This was way back in the year 1642. Over time, he gained quite a following of people uh, by people who visited the priory where he lived. And he would have conversations and write letters to people who began to seek him uh, and his know-how for spiritual guidance. And eventually those letters became the basis for that book that my mentor gave me called Practicing the Presence of God, which I try to reread every year or every other year or so. And what you have to understand is that Brother Lawrence basically became famous for spiritual guidance because of the way he practiced being with God in everyday life. And you know how he spent his everyday life? Cooking in the kitchen and cleaning pots and pans day in, day out. And later in life, when he couldn't stand in the kitchen washing pots and pans all day, he got a job sitting down making sandals. This has echoes of Paul's words in Ephesians 4, 6, which says, There is one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. God is with us everywhere, in other words. And Brother Lawrence figured out how to integrate his faith and worship into day-to-day -day life. The ordinary conversations and interactions and work that were part of his every day. He's famous for basically saying, you can experience God's presence the same way when washing pots and pans as when receiving communion or celebrating the Lord's Supper. He said, we should fix ourselves firmly in the presence of God by conversing all the time with him. Think often on God by day, by night, in your business, and even in your diversions. He is always near you and with you. Leave him not alone. So in moments like these, like Brother Lawrence, we can learn that God is right there with us and we can know his presence. So we can give him honor or worship in every action we undertake and perform. This is where we meet God day in, day out. Like Paul says in Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. I love how Dallas Willard, uh, he has this very poignant thought along these lines. He says, and the only place that Jesus has met us is in our actual life, not in the life that we think we should be living and not in the life we hoped we would be living. And that's really important to recognize. Maybe you've never thought about it this way, but living a day-to-day -day ordinary life of worship is where we meet God. And it's where we discover or remember or perhaps even re-remember that worship is not about trying to gain God's love. It's a recognition that God loves you first. And because of recognizing that, that God loves you first, that's why we want to live this way. This is, this is what we see in the life of Jesus. And if you're a Christian, I've said this before, we're striving to be Christ-like. From what we see of Jesus' life in the Gospels, we see him do his ministry, his healings, his miracles, preaching, eating, loving others, out of response to what he receives at the beginning of his ministry. It's not the other way around. He's not trying to prove himself. His ministry begins after his baptism. And at his baptism, God declares in the presence of everybody that he loves him. Jesus is God's beloved. So... Just like Jesus, the actionable practice of living a life of worship like Jesus did is to recognize that God loves you first. And that just does wonders, doesn't it? I mean, we don't earn God's love uh, any more than Jesus did. It, it puts everything in proper perspective. It helps us align our motivations. It helps us let go of our anxiety. It helps us relax and recognize that we have value and worth and we are wanted by God that God has sought you out and has, been, and has been seeking you out first because he loves you first. And our response is one of practicing daily worship and one of practicing daily worship together. Your life and everything in it, all the mundane daily chores and tasks and work, the commute, conversations, how you are a part of church, how you do that, cooking, cleaning, all of it falls into the actionable practice of taking the opportunity to worship God in return for his love, just like Jesus. His very life was worship to God out of a response to God's placement of love upon him, just like God does with us. Worship is the actionable practice of living out and returning love to God. Worship is recognizing the identity God bestows upon you and me as loved, and then learning to direct and redirect our hearts and minds constantly to Him. 
Again, I love how Dallas Willard puts it in, in his book, The Great Omission. Worship or practicing the presence of God is like the action of a compass. He says, quote, soon our minds will return to God as the needle of a compass constantly returns to the north. If God is the great longing of our souls, he will become the pole star of our inward beings. He's talking about scriptures like Revelation 5.13, which says, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And that forever and ever part means that we live ordinary lives where worship is not just set aside for a specific time once a week, but that the hymns of heaven will be a constant presence in our inner lives. Well, I want to wrap this up with another quote from Willard that's deceptively simple, yet phenomenal. Uh, It's this little phrase that I think sums up all of what we've been talking about extremely well. He says, Worship will become the constant undertone of our lives. So, may you find that God is with you in your day-to-day life, in the mundane, in the ordinary May you worship God by practicing the presence of God the other six days of the week. May you worship God in your waking and in your sleeping and in your chores and in your play and in your work and in your conversations, even in your commute with your family, your spouse, your kids, your friends, your neighbors, your enemies. May you want to worship God more and more because you are responding to the fact that he loves you first. May worship become the constant undertone of your life. And may you want to and be able to engage the everyday actionable practice of worshiping like Jesus. I'm Worth Wheeler for West Seattle Christian Church. Stay rooted and deep in Jesus and produce good fruit, my friends.